Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how it's possible to write on glass with light. I have a laser with 405 nanometer light here, so it's a violet laser. Now watch what happens when I put the laser on these glasses here. It draws on them. <laughs> Look how crazy that is. It darkens the glasses wherever I shine the laser. Surprisingly, the reason this is happening is because of a chemical reaction taking place inside of the solid glass. By shining this light on it, we're actually creating tiny pieces of silver metal in the glass. This also works with ultraviolet light. So if I put it next to this UV light, it turns the whole lens dark. These glasses are called photochromic lenses, and they can be used as regular glasses inside, but when you go outside, they turn themselves into sunglasses because the violet and ultraviolet light turns them dark. These glasses look pretty bad now, but don't worry, if you just let them sit here for a while, the black eventually fades and the glass becomes clear again. What's interesting about this fading is that it fades faster when the glass is warmer. If the glasses are cold, then it doesn't fade as fast. But the temperature of the glass doesn't make a difference when you're darkening them with the light. It darkens the same whether it's cold or hot. So let's put an ice cube under this side here. Keep it cold. So this is the warm side and this is the cold side. One, two, three. One, two, three. You can see how much darker the cold one is compared to the warm one or room temperature one. So we can see that a violet laser can easily draw on these glasses here. But what about different colors? Well, if we go for a lower frequency like this bright green laser here, you can see that it doesn't do anything. You can hold it there for a long time and nothing happens. I can get my three watt blue laser here Hold it there for a long time. And you barely get a little spot. But with this very low power violet laser, I just barely touch it to it. And it draws on it so easily. So you can see the higher frequency we get, the easier it is to darken it. So what's going on here? How does light make these glasses get darker? And why would the temperature of the glass matter? Photochromic glass is just regular glass mixed with some silver chloride crystals. Now silver chloride crystals are clear so that the light can just pass through the glass like normal. But something interesting happens when we shine high frequency light on silver chloride. It can knock an electron off the chloride ion and the silver ion will capture it. If it were just one silver and one chloride ion, then the electron would immediately transfer back to the chlorine atom. But since the silver ion is in a crystal, then it has a bunch of other silver atoms that are in the exact same energy state that it could also transfer to. So this electron is now free to bounce to any silver atom it wants to, as long as it looks the same around the atom. But once it lands on a silver ion that doesn't look the same around it, it gets trapped there. So we now have a silver metal atom that's trapped in the glass. And you know what silver looks like. It looks like this, very opaque and dark color. One atom can absorb much light, but this one silver atom now attracts other silver atoms to be near it, as more silver is being formed by the light hitting the chloride. So eventually you get a small little clump of silver in the spot that can absorb some light. Those little clumps of silver form on all the silver chloride crystal defects and edges. So eventually your glass becomes almost opaque from the silver atoms that are now absorbing the regular light from the room. So now you have sunglasses. But what about those chloride ions that lost their electron? Well, they're very unstable, but luckily in the silver chloride crystal, they purposely put impurities like copper ions. These copper ions can give up their electrons to the chlorine atoms. 
So when the glass is dark, we have copper atoms that want to accept an electron and silver atoms that want to give it away. But to do that, they have to be physically close to each other. So if the atoms never switch places, then the glass would be permanently dark like this. But in real crystals, the atoms are always swapping places, even though it's a solid. The copper ions can bounce around through the lattice randomly, and eventually they'll come near a silver atom. And they'll exchange electrons, and the silver atom will turn back into a silver ion that doesn't absorb light. Now the rate at which these copper ions can move through the crystal depends on the temperature. So if the glass is really cold, then these copper ions don't move as frequently through the lattice, and so it takes longer to find the silver atoms. But if the glass is warm, then the copper ions move pretty fast, and they quickly find a silver ion. That's why these glasses get darker and stay dark for a long time when it's cold. But when it's warm outside, they don't get as dark, and they turn back to clear quicker. What's interesting about this whole process is it's the exact same reaction that happens when you develop film. But the reason that the film developing is irreversible and this process is reversible is because when you develop film, the chlorine atoms that give up their electrons react with a gel that's in there that the crystals are in. So they can't accept the electrons again. So the silver atoms can't turn back into silver ions. So it's almost like you're developing a picture on your glasses. Thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also hit the bell so that you get notified when I release my latest videos. And you can check out theactionlab.com where I sell some Action Lab experiment boxes. I sell a self-pouring fluid kit and also a mini vacuum chamber kit, which is really cool. And we also got some new stock in of the Muso black hole painting, where my wife painted a really cool black hole painting, and then we hand paint it with Muso black, so the black hole looks really black. It's a really cool painting. And thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.